Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of distributed object based system and we'll be discussing some architectures here guys. Okay. Yes. So first of all, to be clear from now on, I'll be continuing with the printed notes guys because I'm not interested in writing the notes, handwritten notes for these topics because these topics are too lengthy and not that much interesting guys. Okay. So that's the reason why I'm using the printed notes and this first page was written by me and the rest of the ppt this is a complete ppt from a particular website guys so this is not my ppt to be specific okay so i'll be using this ppt and i'll be explaining you the, all the things guys okay yes okay so let us start okay so first of all what is this distributed object based system guys so from the name only you can say so there is a concept of object here right yes so in our previous lectures we discussed about uh, the recovery strategies and all those things right so those are not related with this topic guys so you can assume that this as a separate chapter itself right yes okay so basically distributed object system i'll be reading and then i'll be explaining you guys okay yes so in distributed object system the invocation of an object plays a key role in establishing the distributed transparency okay so basically in a distributed object based system your object which you created in your code with the help of the class or somehow you created an object using which you will be connecting to the server or you will be getting the data and all those things will be done with this help of this object guys. So that is the reason why it is called as distributed object based system. Okay. So in principle, everything is treated as an object and client client are often served and resources in the form of objects. That's what I told you, right? So it helps and even the data which it is sending that also is in the form of objects only guys. Okay. So the best examples for these systems are nothing but Corba, C-O-R-B-A, Java based systems and Gol, G-L-O-B-E guys. Okay, so these are the three popular systems. I'll be discussing about a few architectures in this lecture guys. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, so this is our first architecture guys. So this architecture is for distributed object. So basically if there are objects, how will the server will be giving or how sorry how will be the server giving and how will be the client requesting so that's the simple diagram for this guys okay so here we are having a client machine and here is the client and here we are having a server machine and here is the server okay so client is having some program assume in that way so he needs some invocation call from here so the original code is there so he need to get some data or some functionality something right yes so client invokes a method okay so he will be invoking a method and now it is passed through the proxy server guys okay so proxy server will first marshal the message so basically in whenever you are transferring via network you should have some encryption right so mar marshal is nothing but it will be converting into non-readable format okay so, okay so once it is converted it will be interfacing with the skeleton of the server it is transmitted through the network and it is reached to the skeleton so once it reaches to the skeleton it unmarshals it guys and it will be calling the function so it might be inside an object guys so inside that object you can find the apply in you can find the code and you can execute it it might be data it might be a pro a function okay and it, then you'll be returning the result back in the same flow okay yes so i used a few words right here so those words i have explained here so data and operations are encapsulated in the object guys so inside this object only you can find the data okay any kind of operations so data we, we have written here states and methods okay so even you can write data operations also right yes so operations implemented as a methods group into interfaces so basically these operations are implemented as methods okay you can say that operations methods functions all are similar words right yes so if you group them into interfaces so we group them into interfaces guys okay similarly objects offer only its interface to the client so basically whenever a client is requesting here we here assume that we he requested for a particular function so instead of sending that function only we'll be sending its interface guys okay yes so object serve is responsible server is responsible for a collection of objects so basically object server sorry server is only the one who is taking care of everything right yes so he will be taking care of everything we are having a client stub here right so you can say that proxies are a client stub guys because he is the one who is marshalling the messages and who is doing all the things right yes so he implements the interfaces okay so once it returns okay similarly server skeleton handles the unmarshalling and object invocation so it unmarshals and it requests for the object okay yes so i have just returned the same steps guys one way i have, I have written here so when a client requests for some data or something then the mess the request will be passed through the proxy proxy and it is invocated okay so the proxy will marshal the message that is nothing but changing into unreadable format and invocate 
connects it and passes through the network okay on server side the skeleton is unmarshaling the message okay so it and calls the procedure as per the request okay so this is a simple process right yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea about this distributed object architecture right yes so the next architecture is based on java guys i think everyone at least heard this right at least once jeb sorry ejb right ejb enterprise java beans right so even though this you might not be hearing this you will be hearing whenever someone is coding right yes so beans is one of the most common package something you can say which is used in java to achieve this object distributed system guys so to achieve that thing they will be using these things right yes so the diagram will be in this way guys so basically you will be having a container inside that container you will be having multiple copies or multiple ejbs okay so and these will be providing some services like jms jn di jdbc and rmi remote processor calls a java database management system okay similarly here this is messages okay we are having server kernel and this whole thing is inside your server right yes local os and here we are having the network right yes let us continue so this from now on i'll be using the ppt directly guys and this is okay just a second i think i need to adjust the height okay just give me a second guys okay sorry for that guys okay so now i hope it's clear right yes so let us continue okay so enterprise java beans right okay so basically this is based on java guys so that is the reason why we are having the word java here okay okay so an ejb is an essential essentially a java object that is hosted by a special server offered different ways of a remote client to invocate an object so basically to invocate an object only we'll be using the same concept here also guys yes okay so it is having a functionalities like ob, uh, like looking up for object storing the object letting object to be a part of the transaction and all those things so you can do multiple operations here okay so the important issue is that j ejb is embedded inside a container guys so if you recall i told you right so it is inside a container yes okay so which is effectively an interface to underline the services so basically under this we are having multiple services right i told you rmi that is nothing but remote method invocation jdbc java database access okay jndi that is nothing but java naming for naming we'll be using and m for messages okay so all these are under this container right yes so the programmer should explicitly code guys that is the only issue here so someone if you, they are using a java uh, java beans they should automatically code these functionalities also they need to write the code it's not automated so that is the only drawback in this guys right okay so you can just go through the theory as that's what it is written here the issues and it cannot do automatically and there is very less automation right so that is the only drawback in this according to my knowledge okay so on the next page it's just an image guys okay so let us continue okay so we are having a four different types of ejbs guys so the first type is nothing but stateless session stateful session entity bean message driven bean okay so stateless session so please understand guys these definitions are really easy okay so beans are transient objects that are invoked once does it work after which it discards any information it maintained to perform the services it offered to a client so assume that a client came to you and requested for something okay so you will be getting invoked you will be doing that work and once everything is done you will be deleting the whole data whatever you did so there is no proof that that client came and did some work so this is the stateless because you are not saving anything you are being 100% free from data okay similarly stateful session beans maintain the client related states so basically here you will be storing some kind of data how he moved what he did and all those things that is stateful session okay similarly entity entity beans can be considered to be a long lived persistence object such an entity bean will generate to be stored in a database and likewise will also be a part of distributed transaction so basically if you store that details into the database in a secured way and everywhere so in that situation you will be calling them as entity beans guys okay similarly message driven beans so from the name only you can say that is nothing but to check whether the incoming come messages and all those things okay so beans are used to program objects that should react to incoming messages and likewise be available to sending messages so basically it is something like bot guys automated bot so you'll be saying something it will be giving you reply right in high we used to have natasha right so in that way right yes so they cannot be invoked directly by a client but rather fit into a published 
subscribe way to communicate so publish and subscribe way is nothing but initially you will be subscribing for it and then you can publish the things and you can get the replies okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea about this jdb right yes okay so after that we are having uh, this uh, globe global guys that is nothing but globe but i did not find any kind of proper theory for this guys so even in the ppt also there is only there only the diagrams and even in textbook the theory is not that much clear guys like the definition all those things so i think you can just check this right so the diagrams you can just go through them okay yes so this is the flow diagram guys how it will be flowing okay okay so in the next lecture we will be discussing about object servers guys okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching